wow, the past 18 months, eh? Yeah. Feels like we're still in 2020, yeah. we're nearly in 2022, but yeah. I tell you what, God has been so good he and has. God has been so faithful he to has. us as a family and mm -hmm. to our church family. And none of us could have written the script mm -hmm. of the past 18 months, but the, no doubt about it, God has been right in the middle of he it has. and the church continues to advance. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think we can underestimate what actually has taken place over these last, you know, two years, really almost two years. Um, people have struggled, you know, we've struggled at yeah. times. I know being a mom with two young children, it's been really difficult and we don't underestimate what people have truly gone through. Um, but we do know that God is faithful. He is faithful, he's faithful. and he's still building his church. Yeah. Memories of lockdown yes. has to be five-a-side football every night in the front room. Yeah, highlight. But there wasn't five people, there was four. Four. Two on two. Yeah. Always started off well, didn't it? Yeah, but it always ended in tears, John. Always ended in tears. One of my favorite things that we were able to do was Norman's at nine. That's right. I mean, we had people tuning in from all over the world. I think it was really fun. I think it gave people an outlet and just to laugh. People's joy was really being stolen from them and we wanted to find a way to make people laugh and we were able to hopefully do that. There's so many memories, isn't there? And often we focus on all the bad stuff, but there's actually yeah. some amazing memories yeah. in lockdown. You know, so much more family time together yeah. and the way our church rallied and we came together and fed those really on the edge in our city, those who are broken yeah. in need. I thought it was incredible to see just the volunteers yeah. and the dream team come together. Yeah. And it wasn't just in our own backyard that we were able to support and love people, it was people all over the world. Yeah. And one of those moments was when the church in India reached out to us, Pastor Samuel Pada in Hyderabad, India called us and mm. said, hey, the need is so great here. They were having a wave of COVID mm. and tens of thousands of people yeah. didn't have oxygen and we were able to rally and send money. Yeah. And, you know, in people who were in need in our church were sending uh, resource and finance to people in need in another country. Yeah. And for me, that just went, wow, as a church, that's the church we wanted to be that's a part right. of. That's the church we want to build. That even people when they're in their own state of yeah. need were able to send love and finance so and true. make a difference. What is Heart for the House? Well, our Heart for the House is all about seeing people's lives transformed through love and action. Yeah, and it's a significant moment. It is. It's an eternal moment. It it's a moment where we get to see people's lives reshaped mm -hmm. uh, in our city yeah. and beyond. Even though so much has uh, come against the church, that we are continuing to advance. That advancement looks different to yeah. what probably we wanted it to look like, but there's no doubt about it. People's faith is stronger. There's a yes. new resolve in That's people. Right. The church is fighting back. Mm. The church is in places now that probably would never have been right. had it had not been for COVID-19. And so, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Mm. Never, and in fact, never been more excited yeah. for what 2021 into 2022 is going to bring, and we get to be a part of it. I love the scripture that God gave our church mm -hmm. for 2021, uh, Psalm 18, 29. Yep, with your help, I can advance against the troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. I think that verse has really been a key verse for the church, but it's also helped people advance and also help people know that whatever comes against That's them, right. God is still for them, God is still yes. with them, and nothing can stop us. As a church, we've been really strategic with the partnerships that we are involved with, both locally and globally. And, you know, with reporting, it, accountability, and the stories that they send through, because we want to be with them for the long term. Right. We want these relationships to be sustainable and uh, build levels of trust that can go the distance. Mm. Our global partnerships include Hope for Justice, who are making an impact around the world, fighting modern day slavery. Vision Rescue, who are providing practical help, such as education and healthcare for children in the slums of Mumbai. Hillsong Tembeletu, a beautiful school for differently abled children in South Africa. Hillsong Israel, doing an amazing job as a local church in Tel Aviv, seeking to bring reconciliation in their community. Last year for our Heart for House giving, we were able to finance motorbikes for the guys at the Nehemiah Trust in Pakistan, helping them bring the gospel and supplies and practical help to the remote areas of Pakistan. For this year's Heart for the House, we're excited to continue our partnership with the Philippines Outreach Centre. 
Because of a landslide in Subek, in the Northern Peninsula, nine children tragically lost their lives and we knew we needed to help. After this tragic event, we reached out to the Philippines Outreach Center and said, hey, what can we do for this local community? And it was a really quick response. It was help us rebuild what had been lost, which was their, their church. And so that's exactly what we did. Pastor John and his team came to visit us just a few years ago and they, through video, introduced you to our little outreach church in Wea Lupang Pangara. In 2013, with your help, we were able to build nine homes to help families. And through your heart for the house, we were all able to build at least the skeleton of a church there. And the people attend the church there faithfully come rain or shine. But with your help, we can see uh, the Lord's house in where get flooring so they don't have to slide around a muddy floor during rainy season or to get walls or even electricity so that when it rains, we don't have to try to shout to be heard. Thank you and God bless you. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do this year. We're gonna send another gift and let's believe this year, even though, yeah, we have great need in building our new church, but in that, let's not forget the need that's happening in the Philippines with their church. And again, we can continue to bring hope to that community. When you think of church, you think of a Sunday experience, the worship, the message, kids, coffee, all the amazing things. But for us, church is so much more than that. It's just a small part of the Sunday experience. Actually, the message of Christ is when we take it outside of the four walls of the building and we take it to those who are lost, those who are hurting, broken, hungry. And we say, hey, you know, we are putting Christ's love into action. Our focus as a church is always about people. You know, no matter what we do, no matter where we go, we could be you know, delivering boxes um, in, in the week, seeing homeless people on the streets, building relationships there, coming here on a Sunday to join together as a community and a family. It will always be about people because that's the heart of God. He loves people and so will we. We're so grateful for our Soul Foundation local initiatives. Through Soul Streets, we're able to partner with the Salvation Army and St. Stephen's Church to serve the homeless community in our city. Through our partnership with the YMCA, we help build healthy relationships with vulnerable young people in our city by showing them God's unconditional love. As we come out of COVID, we're gonna be kickstarting our Soul Community Lunch, which offers support, care, and prayer to those in real need in our city. Soul Restart helps individuals develop key skills and find employment. Soul Food helps feed individuals and families in our city to date, 2.5 million meals have been served to people in greatest need in our community. Soul Foundation, Soul Church, uh, they go hand in hand, they are one. We want to see Christ's love in action in our cities and our world. Well, here we are, Sam. 12 months earlier, we were not here. 12 months ago, we were not in this warehouse. Look at this. This is incredible what's happened here. How many square meters is this place? 8,000 square meters. 8,000 square meters, which is nearly three times as big as the old warehouse. Correct, yeah. And just looking around, just seeing all the food boxes, the food coming in, the dream team. I mean, I'm just blown away by what God's done, hey Chantel? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about the process. Like, how, how does it work? So food comes in. Yep. Uh, the guys, you know, we've had food come in from as far as Nottingham. Some of our local suppliers have uh, partnered with us. And then it, it goes here, finds its way over here, where you see some of the guys already packing to where it ends up here in the boxes. There's a delivery sheet of what we've got. And then out in the van, so we've got three vans, maybe four vans a day going out and approximately 45 Dream Team every week in here. It's wow. amazing. Wow. Just coming up here, I can see it's not just non-perishable food. You've actually now got fresh food, which is, we weren't doing this this time last year, were we? That's correct, yeah, we, we couldn't do it, but now because of the space is the big thing. So these are the freshest carrots in the country at the minute. Uh, Look at this. Cabbages, this Oof. is what we got in this week, we've got green beans. Amazing. Uh, so, so not only just getting the, the, the tin food, but getting actually something, a fresh food as well. And then we have our chiller as well. And Chantel, you've been coming into the warehouse every week since the start of this pandemic, and you've been amazing. You and the team packing boxes and just serving the local community. Tell us what it's like being in and uh, what's been happening. Yeah, so again, you know, currently I, I am packing boxes, but 
for, for all of us, really, it's not about packing boxes. It's about yeah. caring for people and really praying every time you put in a, a tin or you put so in good. something, a tea bags, or you, you're actually praying that God truly does change people's lives and helps them see that, that they're cared for and they're loved. And, and I think that's the heart of, of our church. That's the heart of the foundation. I'm excited for the future of the foundation. I'm excited for the future of Soul Food as we continue on. Tell us how that might look in the next coming few weeks and months. So the next weeks, months, we're looking to transition to a social supermarket. So the food will not stop. Come it will on. just change how we do it. And Sam, the message of the box isn't just Soul Church cares, that Jesus cares. Yeah, yeah 100%. This is all about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and bringing him to our city. Yeah. And you know, you've got stories, I've got stories. Yeah. Just, you know, we deliver boxes and just seeing people, you know, I, know. I can think of one at Christmas uh, when we deliver the box and the kids came out just beaming. We, we can eat at Christmas. And, and that's what it means for so many so people. Beautiful. The story of Sarmite. I know. I know. Yeah, being able to deliver the boxes in the beginning, I was able to drive out and deliver the boxes um, and to see the look on people's faces, especially someone like Sarmite, who is just, you know, an incredible woman with a beautiful daughter. And she's come out of, you know, a lot of heartache. But to see where God has taken her now, just to know that through a box of love, that knowing that Jesus cares, she herself, you know, reached out and also wanted to know who this Jesus was for herself. I was born in a little town in Latvia called Valmera and I ended up looking after my brother uh, from age of 14 because my mum basically neglected us completely. My mum's boyfriend he used to beat up my mum in front of us and tried to sexually harass me. And I have suffered, you know, uh, what's caused me anxiety, depression, I have tried to commit suicide. And I had an opportunity to come to England for three months just to work on a farm. And I was in a really, really bad, violent relationship. And uh, when I actually came from Latvia to England, uh, I realised that I can be me. So I ran away from one bad relationship and ended up in um, England, meant to be for three months, but 16 years later, I'm still here. Uh, during the first pandemic, um, I, we already, me and my daughter, we were in a really violent relationship, mentally and, and, and verbally. Before uh, me and Kira declared ourselves homeless, I attempted a suicide. Uh, but one day I was strong enough to basically to say it, enough is enough and I walked out and we declared ourselves homeless. We had nothing, whatever we had in our hands, we had to pack within an hour uh, and leave. I were not able to return. The following week, we received our first parcel from Soul Foundation. And it actually was delivered by Chantal, but I didn't know who she was at the time. And uh, she was so amazing, she stood there, we just chatted away and I didn't know who she even was. She was so down to earth and I just cried because her story was so similar to my life story. And then I started to go online church because obviously there wasn't church in the house. And I basically made a decision. So I sent a text saying I have decided. And, and I started to read Bible and I started to watch online church. And, and I found it like, I'm like, wow, this isn't like a boring church. I love this church. It's singing, it's jumping around, you know? And, but at the same time, it teaches you so much. The very first quote, and I actually hold it there, it's a love is patient, love is kind. That's how I live by, you know, because the love and kindness, you know, and love never fails. And I've learned that from Soul Church and Soul Foundation. Yeah, I made a decision to be baptized and uh, the baptism took place in the North Sea. I feel that the old me got washed away and me understanding that I am forgiven. It's actually have given me so much p more peace. And Kira, she kept saying, oh, mommy, I really regret I didn't uh, get baptized. As soon as we heard that there's next one taking place, she was like, mommy, please, I want to do it. And I finally managed to get myself a little car. And I said, it's time for me to give something back because I weren't able and I started to go and help Soul Foundation to actually to help with the boxes because 
I, I, I know how it, what it means to receive them. Whoever gonna open this box, it's gonna change their lives like it's changed ours, you know. And wouldn't be for Soul Foundation. I really don't know where I would be today. I think stories like the Samite story really sum up what the church is all about, which is the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. And, you know, she was watching online yeah. during, during yeah. the lockdown, made a decision, text the number on the screen, I have decided, mm. and from there, um, you know, is now walking a journey and with, with her family and church. Yeah, and the redemption power of Christ at work in our lives, it doesn't just stop with us. No. It keeps going, just like it keeps from my life into my children, the same for Sarmai and to her daughter. It's the same for the people that we truly believe will be changed for Jesus Christ. And there's so many more Sarmites, there's so many more stories out there that are yet to be written, and I can't wait to play a part in that through this year's Half the House. One of the most moving moments of 2021 mm. was at the start of the year when Chantal and I and our team got invited into the Clare School, a school for complex needs children in the city of Norwich. And they had done a sponsored walk, yeah. these amazing children. So and as a foundation, we've been able to support some of these children and their families throughout the pandemic with food boxes. But in a way of saying thank you, mm. they invited us in and they had raised 5,000 yeah. pounds through this sponsored walk. Yeah and they presented it to us. And it was one of those moments where, wow, we want to be helping you yeah. and you're helping us. So and so as part of this year's Heart for the House, we really wanted to go, okay, we want to make a difference in that school, helping maybe upgrade some of the facilities, um, showing ways we can support some of the programs, care, love. And so that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And I'm really it's excited. Exciting. And I know it's going to stir your hearts and uh, I know it's going to stir the heart of God. Well, here we are at the Clare School in Norwich, a, a school for complex needs children, and we're with Rebecca, Rebecca. the head teacher. Oh, she's amazing. Yes, yeah, she is. And you're going to tell us a little bit about the school. Tell us a little bit about the history. And uh, so the Clare School will be 100 years old in five years' time. And we started as an open-air school for children with TB. Uh, and it's grown into a really specialist provision for children with medical conditions, with life-limiting conditions, uh, with physical disabilities. Uh, we've now got 113 pupils. And we've been talking uh, offline about the life expectancy of these children. Just tell us what you're telling me uh, yeah, about so that. So 94% of our children have a life-limiting or a life-threatening illness, which means that they probably won't live past the age of 25. We have children here who have do not resuscitate plans in place, who have end-of-life care plans in place. Um, we have the most vulnerable and poorly and disadvantaged pupils in Norfolk. So tell us how has COVID affected everything that you do here at Clare School? Um, COVID's been really hard, really, really hard. Um, the, the, the world of the children just shut down. So they, uh, respite provision stopped. Um, lots of our children are clinically vulnerable. Um, and so the parents were really cautious about making sure they were safe. We had to be really cautious about making sure we were keeping them safe, but we didn't shut. We haven't shut because our parents, our families have needed that. They've needed us to keep going. Um, we've delivered uh, toys, we've delivered games, resources, we've gone and done home visits, we've done homeschooling. Yeah, it's been relentless. It's been relentless. I've, I was told yesterday 78,000 meals have been provided for our families wow. from Soul Foundation. 78,000. It's kept, it's kept our families going. You know, when they couldn't get out to the shops because they've got a profoundly disabled child, they had no food. And so we were so grateful to be able to have those boxes. And we could send staff to go and do welfare checks, to make parents a cup of tea, to deliver the food, and just, it was a real community effort and we, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So as part of this year's Heart for the House, we want to bless this school. Now, tell us in what areas um, this resource and this, this money can be used uh, best. We've got, <laughs> we're struggling with a building that's 100 years old. Sure. Um, we're struggling with walls that leak and windows that don't open and rooms that are cold and rooms that are too hot, um, which really affects the medical needs of our children. This is one of our oldest buildings. Right. It uh, was built in the 1920s. Our floor 
is lovely, original oak, really nice, but it's not suitable for our children. It's, you know, they're learning to crawl, they're moving, they're getting splinters, it, and we can't keep it clean. Um, you know, we've got a bathroom made out of a cupboard, which it will do, but that's not dignified. I think this probably speaks for itself. I'm not sure anyone would want their child taught in a room no. that's like this. You know, when it rains, the water comes in. When it's hot, it's like a greenhouse. When it's cold, it's absolutely freezing. So these are Norfolk's most, most vulnerable children being taught in a space like this. Yeah, and so this is the harsh reality of what is happening here. And we can't do everything, but we can do something, yeah. eh? I think what excites us, Rebecca, as much as helping and supporting the facilities is the relationship. Because it's the relationship that's going to, uh, you know, strengthen as the, the months and years on. And the fact that we can really help these young people, um, you know, maybe even integrate into a church community. Well, we've got six formers who come to now work at Soul Foundation to pack the food boxes. Oh, that's just the yeah. best. <laughs> they're on their way. They're, 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 then they're nearly ready. They'd like t-shirts. Yeah. Um, we'll but, work out but the t-shirts. We can make yeah. that happen. So we've got five or six six formers who'll be coming on a Thursday regularly to come and support. Because they want to say thank so you. They want to give back. <laughs> well, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Oh, we thank love you. this school. We appreciate you. We value you. And the best is yet to come. The feeling's mutual. We we love you, and we we couldn't have got past you know through the last eighteen months without you. Our families would have crumbled. You know, it's really moving to see what is taking place at the Clare School on a daily basis. And, you know, really it stirred our hearts yeah. for uh, what God is doing here in our home at Soul Church. And, you know, we've recently opened a Send Room and we want to expand that vision yes. really to welcome in so many beautiful children that do have complex needs. And, and we want to welcome them in and let them experience the love of Jesus for themselves. We want to model for our children generosity and giving to something that is far greater than ourselves. And you know, our children here, even at Soul Church, I know that they too can play their part, collect their coins, give to God something for themselves that will prepare their hearts for the miracle offering. So here we are on our Heartsease Lane site. In just a few weeks time, we are going to be breaking ground yes. on our brand new facility. It was a dream that God gave Chantelle and I four years ago. It's going to come into reality, and I can't believe we've come so far. We have around a 3.5 million pound faith gap for this project, and that might seem a big number to us, but with God, nothing is impossible. And a large proportion of this year's giving is going to go towards this new project. And we're trusting God uh, by faith. We're aiming to open the doors. The grand opening ceremony is Easter 2023. That's it. They heard it here Put first. It in your diary. So come on, I encourage you to allow God to stir your heart and prayerfully consider the part that you can play as you sacrifice, as we give. And we're going to see this building. This is not just a building, it's a vehicle to house the vision that God's placed in our hearts. And we're going to see changed lives, we're going to see salvations, miracles, and I believe a great revival sweep our city. Come on, let's believe God as we stand together. So here we are in what is a wild garden right now, but it's actually going to be our new platform area, which means in close proximity is where people are going to come down the front and make their peace with God as they become followers of Jesus. It's incredible what's going to take place. Yeah, and we are excited that on Sunday, the 31st of October, we will be breaking ground here at the Heart Sea site. Spade is going into the ground. Get ready. We're going to have a bit of a party. Fireworks. You don't want to miss it. I feel like we're just at the beginning. Seven years in, yet God has placed so much more vision and passion inside of us to reach our city and beyond. And there's so many more people who have yet to be invited into God's life-changing story.
We know that the last 12 months has been a really challenging time when it comes to the area of our finance and uh, our giving. But uh, at Soul Church and through Heart for the House, we've always said it's not about equal giving, it's about equal sacrifice. And it's all, always about the conviction, the personal conviction, which we have individually. And uh, you know, I encourage you, don't give on credit, yeah. okay? Don't give what's not yours. You give what you feel comfortable with. You give with the amount that God's placed in your heart and that you have a piece about. And uh, ultimately, it's God's church. He's gonna continue to build it. He's gonna supply every need. And we're just so grateful that we get to play our part. Mm -hmm. Our prayer this year is that God has stirred your heart with the vision that he's laid on our hearts mm. and that you would run with the vision, but in that you would trust him and you would trust God as you let go, mm. that he would come in and fill that gap. And we're gonna, we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear a breakout of miracles, not just in our church, but individuals' lives of people's families, businesses uh, who contribute to this offering. We want to say a big thank you to every person who's getting involved, playing their part in this year's Miracle Offering. We could not do this without you. And I know that many, many lives in our city, in our church, and the, the nations around the world are going to be touched by this year's Heart for the House giving. We're going to advance. We're going to take ground. We're going to break ground. And we're going to believe God that there is always more in Him. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And the best is still yet to come.